The one thing you should do is really force your will upon the paper. Even if it's going to fail, I'm just going to do it with confidence. And then if the overall image sort of reads, the mistakes are not going to read as clearly because there's just so much noise. Great bits of wisdom. So I brought my sketches here to show you five years of public transportation and public sketches. And I've compiled them all into this book and I called it Figure It Out. So the first page here is a woman upside down. I kind of remember from every drawing in this book where I did it and how I felt and where I was. It's like a journey through your memories, actually, and it captures it better than a photograph, interestingly. This one I drew in when I was in Prague in a hotel room. It was just an exercise on drawing someone upside down out of my head. And these were in Berlin, like Hansel and Gretel. This was on the plane waiting to go on the plane. I was watching Save It Private Ryan on the plane, so that's where that inspiration came from. I wasn't really in Normandy. <laughs> My wife is a lot Mario in this book, and a lot of people that go through the book, they ask, like, does she sleep that much? I just happen to always draw her when, I'm, when she's sleeping, so she does do other things than sleeping. And here's Christian. He's sort of hidden in the book everywhere, so if you can spot him. And this was a drawing where I accepted, sort of, that Mario said I'm, I'm balding on the top. There's a little... Yeah. Oh, that's not a bald spot. No, it's not. <laughs> that was exaggerated. <laughs> Marshall, you want to lean your head? I think no, we no, should... To the top camera, just look down, all the way to the camera. Yeah. <laughs> My dad was bald, so I'm kind of already knowing where I'm going. More movie studies. A good thing is when you're on a plane and you're bored of doing the plane drawings where you draw the fish eye in front of you, it's just you can practice portraiture by watching films and just stopping the movie. More airport waiting in the lane. What do you use to color those? Uh, the Tombow markers. They're, they're water-based markers. Uh, if you use the, the Copic ones, they're really great, but if you do them on top of ballpoint, then it smudges them out. So either you do the Copic one first and the ballpoint on top, or you do the ballpoint first, but then you have to use water-based markers on top of them. So I always try to incorporate a little bit of storytelling in it, because if it's just a drawing of a figure standing, it doesn't grab people's attention as much if you add a little bit of a story to it and little details of how her personality is because the room is messy. I, I think it keeps people their attention a little bit longer. This is a particular sketch I, I still like. I just drew it, I remember, at waiting at the doctor. I always feel it like a little victory when I defied social media and I was doing a little drawing. And these are all, again, sort of movie studies or pictures that I find interesting, or rappers. It's sort of meditation for me. When I'm working, I do a lot of storyboards and I have to think a lot about the, the composition and everything. And these heads are like meditation. Thinking about Albert Dorn and like the 50s, like I'm really inspired by those early American. The draftsmanship is really great. These drawings I drew on my phone, even the hands. The app I used was pen up but it doesn't really matter which app you use. At the barber, and you don't have your sketchbook with you, you can draw on your phone. It looks a lot like traditional pen. It does. That's why I put it in the book, because at first I was thinking they're pretty loose, but then again, that's how every drawing starts. It almost seemed like it was a sponsorship. Like, what is that app that you're using? Oh my God, that looks so I'm, good. I'm, I'm not endorsed. <laughs> Please give me money. But this is endorsed by Proco.com. Check out my figure drawing fundamentals course so you can start filling up sketchbooks of your own. That's at proco.com slash figure. This is on the plane. So I usually do a lot of plane sketches where I'm in front of it. They will come later. I was actually really freaky about this because before the plane ride, I was already thinking, what am I going to draw on the plane? But then I wondered, what if I peek through the lane when I'm on the plane? So I was already envisioning this sketch before I was on the plane. That's my wife and I in the car, the 405. So here is just uh, like, I thought it was interesting because it's the only time in the book I do this where it's like before and after, like where you can see the sketches because I kind of like the lines. When I added the color, it, it gives something, but there's still something that I liked about the line quality of that one. Mario's sleeping. <laughs> and here she's actually falling asleep. So I, like, I was drawing it in increments. Oh no, here she's cooking. So that's on the tram. How long does something like that take, the, the tram one, let's say? Uh, I drew this one on the plane. I drew this one first. This is, I actually drew on the tram. Okay, how long did that take? So at, at first I draw like a very loose wireframe like you see here, and that's what I do on the spot. And I only focus on the things that I don't know how to draw. It's like, I know how to draw humans, I can fill them in later, but I, for instance, don't know how the handles work in a tram. So I'm very deliberately focusing on things that I don't know. And in the moment, that takes me like 15 minutes. And then afterwards, I had to figure it out, probably another 40 minutes. But once I did this drawing, 
then I could draw this because I was looking at this as a reference, sort of how does that ceiling work? It's precisely the same. But then I just tried to make a composition out of it with a Tinder match or something, you know. And I draw myself and Mario in it in the back. So the figures are completely invented? Yes. In the moment, I do sort of a, a gestural thing, but mostly they're, they're, they're all invented. Like, same here. Like, I know how to draw my own hand and stuff. Like, I can... I mean, when I'm sketching, it's, it's right in front of me. But, yeah, most of the figures are invented. Like, I, I try to plot the perspective out first, and then I fill in with what I see. It's not exactly what I see. Here's some pencil stuff. Catwoman. Some League of Legends stuff while I was working there. But it wasn't done for a job specifically. I did them as warm-ups in the morning. Live drawing. Waiting in the line at the airport. More live drawings. This used to be a style that I drew in. Now it's more pen, but there was a time that I really was into pencil. Doing these uh, little thumps. And here's Christian again posing with the tigers coming in. I remember doing this one at 6 in the morning in Japan. I was jet-lagged, so I saw this cool building. And the way you see these little smudges is not Copic. My wife thinks it's gross. It actually is kind of gross. I take my finger, I wet it, and then I rub the ballpoint pen. And you get a darker value. And whenever I do it in public, she's like, people are watching. Like, don't do that. You can chew tobacco and do it. Make a new earth tone. Oh, nice. Are you encouraging me to chew tobacco? Yeah. So I think you should take it out. It's for the art. <laughs> uh, yeah. Centaurs. That's the Grand Market in Leuven, my hometown. So I was sitting, I wasn't really smoking, I don't smoke, but... You don't need to defend it. I, <laughs> so here, this girl right here is the same one as here. I just drew myself from top view and trying to see the room from, from the top. And that's also on the plane eating ice cream. Nice work. You must never get bored. No, because you just have your sketchbook always with you. I look at it as playing a game and the loot is like the, the end result, but I enjoy getting to the end result more than the end result. Well, good games are like that too, right? Yeah. This is one of the sketch meets from Christian, actually. Some work from Peru. That's Mario. This is still true. I still don't know what I'm doing. It's more Sin City. There's some kid shows from Belgium when I feel nostalgic. And this very much felt like me in school, like distracted getting Fs. Well, in Belgium, they don't get, say it in F, but... Do they do one, two, three? Yeah, one to ten. And if you're below one five... To ten. Yeah, if you're below five, you failed. You got below five? Yeah, frequently. And I'm proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> Were you proud of it because you knew that you could draw? So, a fun fact is, I actually didn't learn to read and write till I was like eight or something, which is pretty late. Because I was constantly telling my parents, like, I'm going to draw, like, I don't need to, to learn how to write or read. And then I wanted to understand what the comics were actually about. So then I taught myself afterwards how to do it because I wanted to understand the stories. I should have listened to my dad and practiced it earlier. So this is one of the drawings that I meant that I usually do on the plane. There were actually many more like this, but the publisher said, like, let's keep it at three. These are actually studies. And I wrote it down here because I want the, the artist to be credited. And Mario sleeping, working, looking up, more imagination pencil ones, more faces, Mario watching TV with an army behind her, battling it out, <laughs> um, ballerinas. So this was live drawing, and this is a, a person on the tram. What I really like about these tram drawings more than all the more composed ones is because I remember the moment, I remember standing in Croatia on the tram, drawing them. Those drawings have something very casual, some poses, so if you draw from life, so if you go through the, to the plain one, if I would ask anyone or, or someone asked me to draw someone sitting, they would never decide to be in that pose where they have their hands in that certain way. And there's something that you can see that it's been drawn from life instead of imaginative. Like the poses from life are so relaxed. That's why I think it's important to just draw in public. Because even when the model is posing in class, like the, the poses are very artificial. To get really relaxed poses, you have to draw for, in public from life. So when you draw in public from life, you are taking a snapshot in your mind because a person isn't going to hold still that long. Yeah, like I just have to do a very quick gesture. Oh, that's the one from the Proco video. And that captures pose? Yeah, like these ones. Like it was the same girl, but she just leaned on her other leg. And I thought it was very interesting to draw before and after to see how the contraposto actually shifted. So probably these ones are like a minute. But the thing is, if usually when a person goes from one position to the next, they usually go back to their previous position. So I start drawing this one, she switches, so I start drawing that one, and then she goes back to that one, and I can go back. So it's always good to have multiple sketches going at the same time, so you can switch between them, if they happen to take that pose again. And usually they do. It's like hands on the tram, some random 
stuff. Like, here's a story again. How did it start? The story, I start with little thumbnails. And when I like it, I do a bigger drawing. And you were not looking at any model? No, not here. I might have looked at, a, at what a Fisher hat looks like. So I, I sometimes search very specific things. So you envision that as you draw it, not necessarily before you draw it? I see the angle from the top. And, and like a little thumb of a person sitting on a box. And I think, oh, that would be funny if the cats are eating all the fish. Here's the, the museum. That's the Natural History Museum? Yep. Yeah, that's the one. Like after practicing horses, I try to draw out of my hat. So some of them are more successful than others. The one thing you should do is really force your will upon the paper. Like really know, even if it's going to fail, I'm just going to do it with confidence. And then if the overall image sort of reads, the mistakes are not going to read as clearly because there's just so much noise. Great bits of wisdom. Like this one I really like. It's not the most best drawing per se, but it's drawn from life. And I really like the way she was hugging the mom. Like here as well, like when you're sitting on a chair, like she puts her feet like uh, horizontal, uh, vertical on the ground. Like stuff like that. Like if you draw from imagination, you put them both on the ground, for example. That's just a colleague who likes Lord of the Rings. So as I drew like in his computer. So you've got a number of images of people doing mundane things where they're imagining themselves in amazing adventures. Yeah, you have to always like draw what you want to see as well, right? So you have to up it a little bit. Mario and sleeping Mario. Yeah, here at the dinner table, for example. I should have probably paid attention to my family-in-law. Like, <laughs> it's, like, it's also an excuse to hide in your sketchbook. Don't do it always, though. That's also Mario. And this, this is like uh, the actor from Saul, I think. Better call Saul. This is at the airport again. When I do these ones, they're straight in ink, but I have a little thumbnail sketch. And they're very vague, the thumbnail sketches. It's just, I kind of want to figure here, here is going to be the horizon line. So I know everything below it, you see the top plane, and everything above it, you see the bottom plane. And that's how I think mostly very simplified about perspective. And it's Mario or feet, and that's Mario. And that's people on the train station. So this was very special, actually. This was the first time during COVID I went back to Belgium and I wasn't there for a while. And that's where I was waiting for the bus. I was 15 years old and I was ca catching myself being on my phone. And then I suddenly said, why am I not drawing? And that's when I had that realization. So when I went there again and I started drawing figures, it's like this was kind of an epiphany, sort of. I need to, to always keep drawing. You're like Dory. Just keep drawing. Just keep drawing. Exactly. But well, you just gotta gotta keep going. Like it's not it's not about the the end result. I think if you're just thinking about the end result, it's not it's not fun. I think the the most important thing in in learning how to draw is just being passionate about it. There's so much involved with the repetition of it, which is more important. And I really like the act of drawing. It's it's like meditating to me. This one I was on on Valorant. I did all the characters as as a warm up sort of. Because if I draw them once, then I know how to draw them in the storyboards and I don't have to keep looking at reference all the time. Like live drawing sessions, again, a plain drawing. There's numerous of those. This I did from imagination. I just wanted to see if I could draw a woman from the back. And then I kind of thought, like, why don't I make it a live drawing class since I did it already so many times. So I kind of know what those benches look like. It's more plain drawings, uh, random stuff. And this was something that I wasn't finished, but I kind of liked the posing of it. I remember drawing this one. It was one in the morning in Croatia or something. And, and uh, my friend Mario asked me, let's go out. And I said, no, I'm going to go to bed earlier today because I want to finish this and I'm going to bed. And then I finished this page and he comes back in. It's like, you're still here? It's like, yeah, I was going to go to bed. It's five in the morning. And I just completely forgot. So he, he had an entire party night and I just didn't notice the passing of time. No, that was part of that session. It's just combining materials a little bit. Like some of these almost didn't make it in because I thought it was too eclectic, but I guess it's it's good to, to see that I experiment a lot. And that's my grandparents. That's a caricature of him. I love that you do more than one style. Like this one, actually, everyone that knows him thinks this one looks more like him than that one because it's like, it's, it's the way he looks actually. Realism doesn't mean more detail. Realism means if it's, it feels like it's alive. And I think sometimes caricature or cartoons feel more alive than realistic paintings because they, they feel like they have the will to move. Yeah, they've got the expression. They've got the yes. emotional bearing of that person, how they hold their body energy. Like even more exaggerated, but then it even feels more real than reality if you exaggerate gravity or a pose. Yeah, it's a great miracle of drawing. That's my a friend and I in Belgium. He's a comic book artist and we 
we sometimes draw together when I'm in Belgium and we make weird noises. So. Or live drawing. Like trying to, to put a joke in it, you know. This is one of my favorite drawings from Mario, of course. She's sleeping, but I kind of like the, the, the juxtaposition of the colors. And it's also like an animation, like how she moves in that direction. And this means happy birthday in Dutch, so I must have drawn that for someone's birthday. And this is like an example of uh, three-minute drawings. Some environments I did for Valorant as well. There were like early iterations of ballpoint. So I, I do actually concept design in ballpoint pen first because it's quicker. Like I don't erase. And I actually think all those little search lines, they add to the character of the drawing. And it also makes an illusion of detail. So don't erase a lot. Keep all your establishing lines. I feel the same when I'm drawing anatomy. All those little gesture lines, actually, they're also the muscles. I and mean, if you try to find them, then it's like, actually, this was the brachialis or something. Were those colored digitally? No. Actually, no. This is on a brown tone paper, and oh, okay. I did it. I sort of did the airbrush before on the sides. Oh, wow. And then I go with ballpoint pen because I already have a thumbnail of what I sort of want it to be. So the only thing I did in digital is uh, make these things lighter, mm. these ones. I'm a really big fan of Sid Mead and all these traditional drawings, so I try to always, even if it's for work, so sometimes I do traditional. Because it's hard to always stay inspired as a professional artist. Mixing up the way you do things makes your makes the job more interesting. And afterwards, the art director, if you deliver it in time, will not ask you how it is done. So uh, this was a tech talk. I didn't understand nothing. So that's why I started drawing uh, the, the class uh, at Otis. Uh, here, here's more of those early sketches for, for environments. It's Mario sleeping. This was a, a, the fairy tale Cinderella. Like a two steps, this is like the, the cat I thought was always funny. <laughs> Mario sleeping. Me in the back with good company. And at the end, there's just some, uh, some ballpoints that I colored with gouache. Uh, some Drew Struzan inspired, where I just take a red ballpoint pen, I airbrush over it in red, and I take with a white pencil the highlights out. Like, I think these ones look like more like a person, and this one also almost feels like a sculpture now, sort of the way it is. So, so watercolors, and that's the book. Yay. The well, here actually, I had to make the book twice because my computer crashed in December. Oh, really? And I was so frustrated with it that I brought it to a guy that fixed the computer and I was drawing him as he fixed my computer. And he got a nice forward by uh, the person that actually got me my first job at Riot, this Ryan Woodward. Ryan Woodward. Uh, amazing artist. Always looked up to his art when I was in school, so it was it's really like nice to have him write something. Actually, a lot of these drawings in this book were done on Proco paper, like this hey, one. This hey! one. Yeah. Do you have a color in it? This one. The, oh, the, damn! The, the original, yeah. Is that airbrushed? Yeah. On the it, on the paper, it takes a it takes a really a beating. Yeah, I really like the the Proco paper, and it's it's sponsored, not sponsored. It's very good for a ballpoint pen because it's not too rough. Yeah. So for pencil, I haven't tried it really yet because I draw mainly with pen, but for pen, it's really great. Like, and it takes airbrush, it takes paint, it takes what? Yeah. What else is it really good for? It's good for all kinds of weather conditions. <laughs> oh, yeah, really? Yeah. yeah. You could draw in the water. I'll try that in my Just bathtub next time. To get Rembert's book figured out, check out the link in the description. And if you want to get your drawing skills up so that you can start filling up sketchbooks, head over to my drawing basics course at proco.com slash basics where I'll teach you all the fundamentals you need to draw from observation and start drawing from imagination.